Uh, okay, so we have uh, Ryan Davis speaking for us today. Uh, so she is uh, what we know about Ryan Davis. Uh, we found out that she's a statistician working in uh, jumping rivers. Uh, she is also an ambassador for Royal Statistical Society. Um, and also she likes uh, biking and uh, kayaking and uh, all kind of outdoor sports. So, uh, well, we welcome Ryan and uh, we will have, uh, so we'll, you'll have uh, like 40 minutes to speak and we'll have uh, some short session of questions just afterwards. Uh, so, yeah, you're welcome. Hello, good morning. Um, my name is Rianne. It's really lovely to be here. Um, as Anna said, uh, I am a, a data scientist at a company called Jumping Rivers, which as a kayaker is a lovely company name to work for. Um, I'm a statistical ambassador for the Royal Statistical Society. Um, and through my work at Jumping Rivers, I also do sort of statistics and, and education and teach people R. And um, as you can see, I am very bad at French. Um, je suis désolé. Um, my excuse, uh, I grew up in uh, North Wales. Um, and we decided for some reason in my school to learn. We did 30 minutes of French, followed immediately by 30 minutes of Welsh. So um, yes, je suis Rianne à Dwin Hoffi Coffee. It just sort of all blurs into one, so I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, it's lovely to be here. Um, Jumping Rivers, uh, we're a sort of, we do everything data science. We're based in the, new, in the UK, in Newcastle. Um, so we do lots of data science and machine learning. Um, as someone with a background in statistics, uh, I still, I can't stop my face from cringing when I hear machine learning or AI because I, I know realistically, most of the time we're cleaning data and that's fine, right? Um, that's fine. Uh, we do training courses, so I spend quite a bit of my job teaching people R, everything from introduction to R to kind of fitting tidy models, converting things to Quarto. We build a lot of shiny apps. And um, we also partner with Posit, so um, if you've ever used any of the professional products in Posit, such as uh, Posit Workbench, the package manager, um, we sort of uh, install those and deploy them uh, for large companies and universities. So that's Jumping Rivers. What am I going to talk to you about? Well, uh, I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> um, I've been working on a data science project um, for about eight months. When I submitted this abstract, it was definitely, definitely going to be done by March. So I could have April off. I could spend May thinking big thoughts about all of the insights I was going to give you. I could spend all of June making pretty quarto slides um, and then arrive leisurely. Um, I was working on this project yesterday in my hotel room, um, which gives you an idea of, of how this project is going. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you an honest story of, of a, a current data science project, right? What it's like to do client consultancy. I can't promise that there'll be um, new fancy R packages that you'll learn, um, but hopefully we'll just have a bit of an honest chat about what it's like to work in data science and R. And, um, uh, if you think of any nice solutions, I'm not promising to fix problems. I'm going to share lots of problems, maybe come up with some solutions. Uh, and if you come up with any solutions, please come find me. OK, so um, we've got a lovely client. Um, and the client basically has a database of patients that have a, a very rare disease. Um, patients from all over Europe. And we have about, um, the data set has about 2,000 patients. And they just wanted us to perform the data analysis for a very simple study. So what they wanted was uh, they had about 200 indicators, things that they were interested in. So that's things like how old was the patient when they first got diagnosed? Um, it might be um, for what proportion of their life were they a wheelchair user? Um, are they on specific drugs? Have they had certain comorbidities? Um, we're talking about counting, right, and percents, that sort of level of statistics. They also wanted um, AI, which we got down to time series, which we got down to fitting a simple model, but, but fine. 
I mean, this was the, the interesting bit in some ways, but it was, I mean, 1% of the project time. All of the hard work was, was, was counting the people. And then at the end, the, the, the interrupted time series that effectively is why they came to us, because actually at Jumping Rivers, I would say 80% uh, of the developers have PhDs in statistics. So that's really what was, we're skilled to do. So that's why they came to us. But actually, we spent all of our time talking about counting people, because um, that's the hard bit. So not only did they want these 200 statistical summaries, but they also wanted them broken down by different types. Okay, So they wanted to know statistics like what age did the patient get diagnosed, but how did that compare across countries? Was Sweden diagnosing people earlier than Germany? Um, what sort of, um, there are a number of drugs that are available for this disease. So what was the uptake of certain drugs in Belgium? To give you a feel, like I said, there are about 2,000 patients. We've got six countries, about five subtypes of the disease. Mobility, sort of how able someone is to move, could be up to 10 categories here. Three drugs, a number of different years. They also wanted this broken down by time as well, so they could have some time series plots. Oh, and also by age, and a few more. So already, if anyone's sort of um, used to working with these sort of data problems or can do sort of simple multiplication, 2,000 patients broken up into a combination of these stratifications. Yeah, shaking heads. So, it, it, so the first thing we said was, well, you, we can do that, but we shouldn't because your data is going to be empty. There's going to be nothing there. You know, you, you've given us a really um, structured breakdown of how you want the results to look and the graphs, but it's going to be zeros. Oh, also, these are correlated, right? So as the disease is more severe, your mobility is less. So these are not just uh, complicated stratifications, but most of the time, they're highly correlated. Oh, and if there's fewer than five people in a category, we can't show that data as well for data protection. So, so that's kind of the scenario as such. Yeah, so these are the sorts of things we're trying to answer. So what's the average age of patients when they're diagnosed? Uh, broken down by, say, country and subtype. What percentage of patients are taking drug A by country, subtype, and year? So we can make those really pretty GG plots. So my boss is counting, breaking down by groups. Excellent, yeah, we'll do that in 10 days, no problem. Because it's simple, right? We've got tidyverse. Group by country, group by subtype, summarize, job done, c'est facile. Perfect, right? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, if anyone likes coffee, by the way, this is a really good coffee YouTuber. He's called James Hensman. Uh, he does lots of lovely videos about coffee. This is him trying a particularly bad coffee. No. So, yeah. I guess when I, when I was talking about data science without the data, there's lots of different reasons we didn't have the data. So first of all, we had to write, a, well, or adapt a statistical analysis plan. They'd already kind of detailed out exactly what they wanted, but we weren't allowed to see the data. So we had to say what we were going to do, but without the data. And that's often quite normal. And actually, I quite like this idea, right? You know, before we even start tinkering, why not actually think about what could go wrong? Because then it's not going to bias what you do. So I kind of like the idea of having a bit of a plan before you see the data, but being stuck to it and tied to it, I found quite challenging. Um, we were then going to get a little bit of real data. It wasn't quite going to be right, and it wasn't going to be all of the countries, but we were going to get some. But we also can't ever, ever see or touch the German data. So we were going to have to write code, which we were then going to share with someone else who had access to go run that code. Which again, it happens. Um, but it did bring a number of challenges. So um, before I go on, uh, I always feel like these conferences, it's much better just for you guys to have a chat, much easier for me. So have you ever had any of these scenarios where you've had no data? So either it's censored and you're never allowed to see it, or, um, or perhaps you didn't get access to it and you had to write or come up with a plan before you saw the data. So can we just spend two minutes, turn to the person next to you, and go on, give them a smile. 
They're happy to be here. Yeah, yeah, I saw lovely smiles. Have a quick chat for two minutes. Have you ever had this? Okay, I'm going to be quiet for two minutes. Have you ever had problems where you haven't had data? Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. This is um, this is the moment where I annoy annoy the AV guys and go all Annika Rice. <laughs> Does anyone have anything? Someone smile at me. Anyone have any data stories they want to share? Hello. Uh, hi, uh, my name is uh, Nicolas. I work in a company in Australia for human resources. So this is exactly the type of situation we are in. So we handle a lot of like uh, sensitive data. So we have to be very careful. So we have lots of data on premises and we have to move to the cloud. And then in there, basically, you cannot see any sensitive information. So similar situation to what you mentioned. And do you have any ha ways of handling this? Or uh, are you at the problem stage like me? <laughs> No, we have like a, the, a technology department, like lots of people working on it. So we usually try to come up with a plan, uh, like uh, the data sets, like we uh, preemptively manage the variables. And then we hope that uh, eventually we, we get the data as we, as we have it. Yes. Oh. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Jean-Fox. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else want to share? No, nope, that's fine. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Shafwa. Thank you. Um, I would be interested to continue this discussion over coffee as well. So if anyone has uh, any pain stories and they want to share, I'm kind of treating this, you might not might have noticed, uh, this is group therapy right now. I don't know if you consented to this. Um, this project's still a little bit raw for me. Like I said, we were developing on this last night, slash this morning. So um, uh, your, your thoughts and prayers are appreciated. Okay, so we had a plan. What was our plan? Um, well, my, my PhD was in um, clustering, uh, specifically clustering of data streams, high dimensional data streams. So the idea is you've got some sort of high dimensional feed that you're getting in real time, lots and lots of data points, could be videos, um, like satellite images, uh, it could be um, a digital oil field where we've got sensor data in the oil pipes coming through. And, and we have this sort of one pass challenge. So the data is whizzing past you, you see it for some time, 30 seconds, an hour, and then it, it goes. And you need to make inference about the data based on that, that snapshot. So I was trying to do cluster analysis in, in that scenario. And if you see the data just for a little bit, if you can get some statistical summaries out of it, that can be useful later. So if I have an infinite, or if I have a, a, um, a data stream going very, very fast, even if I can't see all of the data, I can tell you the mean of that data, right? Because if I keep track of how many data points I've seen and what's the total, I can tell you the average. I never have to have all the data in one room, right? And I know that sounds obvious, um, but I kind of still think that's a little bit amazing. I don't have to see the data. As long as I keep track of those two summaries, I can tell you what the mean is. And um, if I keep track of the sum of the data, the sum of the squares of data, and how many data points I've seen, I can tell you the standard deviation, right? Um, so we thought we're never going to see the Germany data, 
we could write all of the code end to end and get our German collaborator to, to run the data for us. But actually, we could just generate the statistical summaries we need and then combine them. Uh, because we're not just breaking down by, by the German data, we also need to do things like what's the average of, say, the German data and the French data combined. So we, we weren't just sort of breaking down by stratifications, we had to combine summaries. So by having those kind of small summaries and keeping those and then bringing them over, because we were allowed to see the summarized data, we then had a bit more control. So as a first stab, we thought that would be good. Now that doesn't work for things like medians or IQ, you know, interquartile range. Um, I, I just think it's fascinating that the mean is almost trivial to find on an infinite data stream, but the median is impossible, right? But that's, that's statistics for you. So that was kind of our plan. Calculate lots of little statistical summaries at the country level data, which we maybe can't see, and then we've got it in our space, we can play with it, we can do what we want. We decided to develop an R package because, hey, that's fun, we like R packages. So the idea is we would build an R package and we would send it over to our German collaborator and we would say, run these three lines, send us the RDS file, everything's gonna work perfectly. Spoiler alert, it did not work perfectly. But that was the plan. Marcus was lovely, by the way, he's our collaborator at the, uh, on the client side. Where were we gonna work? We started the project and we'd always talked about where we were gonna work. We kicked off and they went, right, um, so, so where's this virtual space that we're working in? And we went, no, dude, you were providing, you've got the data, you were, no, 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 we're working in your space. So that's something we hadn't clarified early on. So we'd, we, we were months into this project <laughs> and then it was, where are we gonna work? Um, because we manage, um, uh, we partner with Posit uh, and a big part of our job is providing Posit Workbench, we said, hey, no problem we'll create a POSIT workbench and we'll, we'll work in there. So that's effectively um, our studio IDE in the cloud. Um, it was really nice because the client can see all of the logs on that virtual machine. I think we span up a virtual machine using, we tend to use DigitalOcean as our cloud provider. Um, the client could see all of the logs, see everything we're doing all of the time, which is great. You can have shared projects in our studio, uh, in POSIT workbench. Um, so what that meant was when we were doing pair programming and code development, uh, one of my peers could say, hey, this is where I'm working, send me a link. And I could see them typing live, I could see their cursor. You can click follow cursor and it jumps around the scripts. Top tip, don't follow someone's cursor and then they follow your cursor, you get in an infinite loop. Um, other top tips, don't try this while someone's doing a git rebase, that doesn't work very well. <laughs> um, you can also have multiple sessions as well. And this was useful because it just makes, effectively, it's trivial parallelization. So I can run multiple R sessions at once, easily, and run my, my analyses at the same time. One thing I did realize is, obviously, this is very sensitive data, not allowed to be on our computers at all. We spun up Workbench. Uh, we had, um, the data came to us in Excel files. If you click on View File, in Posit Workbench, the default behavior is just download it to your computer. <laughs> so an aid is spinning up the scenario and then as soon as you accidentally click on, click on a, a file, it just immediately downloads. So obviously we treated that appropriately, deleted it, declared it, and disabled that setting, but just worth being aware. The other thing we thought we would do um, is, I, I just, I learned by thinking and I think by typing and coding. So I was desperate to touch this data and I couldn't. Um, so I had a bunch of questions, kind of the analysis I would want to run. And I could have written some scripts and kind of, or sat on a call with Marcus and talked about the development. In the end, what I ended up finding myself doing was writing a quarto doc and sending it to Marcus, which created all the kind of plots I wanted. And that worked really nicely because actually Marcus could look at the HTML before he sent it, make sure that he was comfortable with the data he was sharing. It's easy for him to view. And it, it just made me feel like I was touching the data even though I wasn't allowed to. So that, that kind of worked nicely. Um, we had a bunch of data validation packages that are out there that we can use. I'm not gonna talk about these um, in detail, but we, we used a CERTAR because oh, the client was already familiar with that package. Um, but validate, assert our data validator, point blank. These were all really nice um, 
packages which allow you to write in your code in some way, make sure that this column meets this specification, make sure that this column is unique, make sure that this column is only this type or only contains values from this, uh, uh, from this subset. And that helps us make really good errors. So in the quarter document, I could write a data set, put a bunch of these kind of validation steps, and I'd very quickly get the information that I wanted as an analyst. Okay, so that, that was the plan. What happened? So Marcus said, uh, I said, can we have some dummy data? Because dummy data is great, right? It's, uh, it gives you just the right amount of information about your data without, without you seeing the sensitive stuff. So yeah, yeah, sure, you can see the data. Oh no. <laughs> um, it was an Excel, XLSX worksheet, which isn't a terrible data structure, but it meant that we were missing um, defined column types, which we would have had if we'd had kind of like a SQL dump or something. Um, and also the real data, it was some bits of the real data that were shuffled. Ooh, ominous. Perfect for my talk. Um, uh, the, yeah, it was the real data shuffled, which, which was okay, but it meant that we missed things like how the columns interact with each other. So things like we're talking about drugs. What drug is someone on? When did they start it? When did they stop it? Are they still using it? And if you just get the data kind of sampled, you can understand the distribution of those columns but you don't understand how it relates to the real world. Uh, so I said, have you got a database schema? They said, yeah, we've got it online, it's beautiful. It's lovely, look, it's got text, it's got a nice little flag, it's, got, um, it's telling me that this is date stamped, uh, it's version controlled, which is really nice. Uh, and then I asked Marcus about this, and he said, oh, no, 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 that's not actually <laughs> the schema. That's, that's the ideal. That's where we want to get to in five years. So it was useful, but not quite useful. And we still didn't know what, what the data types were. So all the dates actually came in character uh, Y, 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 M, M. Why? Uh, no, that's, that was fine. We can handle dates. We've got Luba date. Uh, and I said, are you going to do the validation? Yeah, yeah, we're going to do the validation. When the data goes into our database, it's validated. You can see where this is going. Um, <laughs> there's a format, guys. Um, we, we validate the data when it goes into the database, and then we download it with our SQL, and then we look at it, we open Python, and then uh, they, they do some validation in Python, and then we send it over to you, and you know we've removed all of the NAs, all of the data is correct. No, 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 no. Um, so we had lots of patients with stop dates and no start dates. So we, you know, we need to say, we need to look at the population just when on, on that drug, but we don't know when they're on that drug. Uh, start dates, stop dates, but no drug name. The list was endless. And we used Quarto to kind of keep track of these and describe them, because half the battle here was actually communicating to the client what the problem was with the data, because they didn't know their data. That's why they were working with us, right? Uh, from a project side, whose responsibility is it? That, that's the hard bit, right? Um, uh, because they said they were going to share with us validated data. We had some definitions of what that looked like, but it wasn't necessarily clear. Okay, so we get to running the analysis. This is the exciting bit. I say, Marcus, we've spent months creating this R package. Ten days became months. Um, let's run it. We've got an R package. Really excited. Oh, no. <laughs> um, error in per map. Any guesses? So we, but obviously we, we, we've tested this on, by this point we've now got data for almost all of the countries, we just don't have Germany. We can never see Germany. The problem in Germany was, I say problem, it's not really a problem, no one has died from this disease in Germany. No one. <laughs> and of those 200 indicators, most of them are around how long did someone live? How long from diagnosis to when they died? Um, maybe we should have thought of this beforehand, but this was not one I was expecting. Um, so we, we got around that. We, we should have handled things like nulls, non, what happens, right? Because we don't mind if it fails quietly as long as it gives us a null or something. There were lots of places in this code to, we had to constantly thinking, what, is, what, if, what if the data is empty? Right, you know how in lintar, when you have like of length one to n, and then you need to, um, and then you get that error saying, oh, don't write, you know, one to length, whatever, use sequence along, right? Because bad things happen when 
the length is zero, right? That should have been my title. Bad, yeah, bad things do happen when, when length is zero. Uh, yeah, started running the analysis, got this one. This is nothing related to um, uh, not having data. Uh, this is just something I didn't know. Excel files, your tabs can't be more than 31 characters. Who knew? That's a fun fact for you. Share that in the pub later. Um, yes, the maximum length of a, of a tab is 31 characters. So not a problem, but just another, like, we've sent it, it's running. Oh, no. So the final run, I say final, this project is still going, going. This was Friday last week. Um, Marcus is still optimistic in great spirits. Sure, I'll run it straight away and let you know. A few moments later. <sighs> this, was, this was last Friday. Um, again, therapy, therapy, guys, thank you. Um, any guesses what this one is? Error in left join, something must be empty, problematic argument, relationship many to many. What's always the problem? Versions. <laughs> we thought we sorted this because remember, back at the start, this was simple. We were doing group by and summarize. Why do we need to know what version dplyr is? And we'd already said dplyr had to be 110, right? We'd already put that in the R package description. We didn't need rm, we didn't need docker, because it's simple. <laughs> it's just group by summarize. Um, yeah, there's uh, some really nice uh, extra features in the joins, and we've got the, the way you handle many to many. We work with our all day, so we love keeping up to date and using latest versions. We'd used a slightly newer dependency. So again, not a problem, but this was, um, we were getting tired. Um, as an aside, we have a, um, uh, a website, an open source project called Diffify. If you've not heard of it before, um, can I share this? I won't share this now. If you go to diffify.com, um, basically what it does is it allows you to see the uh, version diff between two versions of any R package. Uh, it handles CRAN, I think it handles GitHub, I can't remember, uh, and I think it also handles Python packages. So you can type in, I want to compare dplyr version uh, 112 with dplyr uh, 008, and it shows you the diff, but in a uh, kind of more sensible way than just GitHub. So you, see, you don't see any of the documentation files, it allows you to compare news files quite nicely. So um, diffify.com, if you ever get stuck with versioning, hop on there and give it a go. I, I tend to use it quite a bit. And if anyone likes the logo, I've got stickers. Okay, and voila, this is what we did. This is eight months of work. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I haven't censored the data. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, this is what we said at the start, right? 2,000 patients, multiple stratifications, rare disease, highly correlated, it's going to be zeros. Um, and um, because of the number of combinations, there are around 1,000 of these plots, um, which the client is going to go away and look through, and we're gonna have a talk on Monday. I'm not working on Monday. Um, on Monday, like, we're gonna chat through this. This isn't, a failure, I know it sounds like a failure. The client wanted to understand what was possible in the data, what they could look at, because we've got a number of studies, we're going to work with this client for the next few years, analyzing this data. And they have a client who doesn't understand what their data can and can't do. So they wanted evidence to take to their client to say, look, I know you're really interested in this disease and it's important. Um, and I know that you really want to know all of this stuff, but we don't have the data yet to do that. Um, so so I have a slide here which says, in hindsight, um, again, this is still very raw, so I'm still kind of working out what things we should have done better, what things we, we could have done. From the top of my head, I wish we'd pushed back earlier or just pinged across some evidence earlier about the, the true missingness of the data. I think it was hard because actually we didn't have all of the data until a few weeks before we sent these plots because it was always, oh, it will arrive next week, it will arrive. But the signs were there and perhaps we could have communicated even earlier. Look, when we said there's no data there, there, there really isn't. Um, 
if we'd had something like a SQL dump rather than an XLSX sheet, which would have been possible, we could have rebuilt a dummy database from that, and that would have saved a lot of pain, so that would have really helped. Um, we refactored this analysis more than I thought we would, and we found the whole per map nest a really helpful framework for keeping track of what we're stratifying by at every time point. So that was a really kind of helpful formula for us and our analysts. Um, we're currently on version, as of last night, 00169. We've not done a major bump yet. <laughs> um, we, we, I, w I wish we'd paused and thought a little bit more about the Git workflow, because we actually we spent a little bit more time rebasing, because we were trying to do things nicely than, than we did. And probably should have used RM from the start, but hey, it was a 10-day project with uh, Group I, right? So who needs RM? Use RM. Okay, um, that's me. I have a, let me try and remember what I need to say. Oh, yeah, this is where my talk is. Uh, and um, if you happen to be in the UK in October, uh, we run a conference called Shiny in Production, all about deploying Shiny apps. Um, if you're looking for an excuse to visit the UK, Newcastle is lovely. Uh, the climate is very, very similar to the south of France. You'll feel just at home in the northeast of England. Um, and if you, if you do think you'd like to come to that conference or you want to chat to me about anything, I'll be around. I can probably get you a discount code as well for that one. So otherwise, thank you for your attention and for your thoughts and uh, any questions. <laughs> Someone that had a quick question about Germany. Why couldn't you see the German data? Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, so the different countries uh, are all managed by different, uh, different organizations, and the regulations in Germany around kind of patient data are generally stricter than some other countries. Uh, we didn't actually work with any French data, so I don't know uh, what the deal is in France. Um, there was a significant difference between... Um, the countries where the, the doctors kind of keep track of the data and the countries where the patients own their data. And, and Germany tends to be a country that is more patient-led and, and kind of patients owning their data uh, and have, they have stricter patient confidentiality rules. Then we have a question about project. Um, well, uh, like, look, someone uh, asked, it, it's so very difficult doing quotes for data analysis. What do you ask the client right at the start about the data? What do you have what about the data? Uh, um, what do you ask the client about the data to get the quote right? To get oh oh gosh yeah so that so I think that's one of the big challenges about when I say data science without the data, well that's consultancy right that's that's starting how how you set things up. So I say this was sold as ten days. Um, this was will probably take ten days. Um, but you know, we'll 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 update it every couple. We'll keep running the updates and let you know how much it's going to cost. Um, <laughs> that didn't go down so well. Um, yeah, it's hard. So what we tend to do now is every time we do a data science project, we say we won't actually start this until we've spent X number of days chatting with you or ideally looking at the data, because it's just it's just too hard to give a, an accurate estimate without having an understanding of the data challenges. So. Uh, yeah, so we have another question, uh, uh, a bit more technical probably. <laughs> um, uh, what do you think about federative learning algorithms? Uh, it speaks to you. About uh, rate, rate learning, what generally? Hmm? Rate, rate of learning algorithms? Uh, yeah, I mean, because that's basically what can help, let's say, in communicating with, uh, with the data which you don't see. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I mean, you can think about that kind of idea of explore, exploit, right? How much time do you spend kind of delving in and how much do you just sort of lean on the data that you know? Um, I think the problem here wasn't necessarily algorithms that we could have used to understand the data better, but just the way to actually communicate that with, that with the client in the first place. Uh, okay, so um, would you say the toughest data analysis you had to deal with? The, the what? Analysis? The toughest. Toughest? Yeah. <laughs> In this project, <laughs> this, this was counting, most of my projects, in, so we work across all industries, we work with NHS, um, we work with uh, big pharmaceutical companies, and most of the time, 
it's counting. We had another similar one, big manufacturing company. They see, um, we, we see uh, the manufacturing is cars. We see cars at the start and cars at the finish. And they have lasers saying how well the cars are put together. And at the end of the pipeline, a human says, this is a good car, this is a bad car. And they said, do a uh, complex analysis on this. And uh, there were eight data points that were in both sets. So a lot of the problems are data-based rather than analysis-based. Um, occasionally, we get to do some fun things like spectral clustering or um, multi-armed bandits. But most of the time, it's counting. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we, I, well, we have some questions which you didn't have an opportunity to to ask in the in the application. Okay, uh, I think no. Uh, well, I I really liked the presentation. I just wanted to to comment that I would be interested to to see the SQL uh, how to work with uh, with data which you don't see and clients which don't want uh, don't know what they want to do with it because we have a project just <laughs> just of the type <laughs> we can have some therapy later over uh, the dinner yeah. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll um, okay so uh, uh, i think we can thank uh, uh, ryan once again uh, <laughs>